spring, they will fly north 3,000 miles to recolonize North America. Over the summer, three generations will live and die. It's up to a fourth generation to find the way back to this secluded grove for the winter. And every fall, they do. Not all gatherings are quite so predictable. This colorful congregation in the Australian outback is a rare sight indeed. It's made up of thousands upon thousands of budgerigars, a type of parakeet. They may be the world's most popular pet birds, but in the wild, they live far from human company. Usually, they travel in small flocks, seeking the grass seed that makes up their staple diet. But when food is plentiful, they appear at water holes in spectacular numbers. Wave upon wave descend to drink in turn. Each bird alights for just a few seconds before another takes its place. But wherever birds gather, so do their predators. The black falcon, a formidable hunter. But the budgies' sheer numbers are also their secret weapon. It looks like the falcon has all he can eat, but as the flock splits, he doesn't know where to turn. And while he's distracted, more budgies sneak a drink. Some act as lookouts, watching the drinkers' backs. The falcon tries again, but he's quickly spotted. He isolates a target, but it just drops like a stone. He tries again, but the same thing happens. Working together, the budgies survive. By settling for a moment, each gets a drink, while the rest run rings around the falcon. In the chaos, even a single bird presents quite a challenge. The black falcon is outwitted by the power of the flock, and it's not the only benefit of massing together. When birds assemble, something extraordinary happens. They act like a superorganism, traveling with a single purpose. The knowledge of each bird adds together and helps the flock come to a consensus. It finds food and makes choices far better than any individual. This is one of the largest flocks of budgies ever seen. Together, a million birds appear to think and react with one mind. The budgies are living proof that when finding food or facing predators, it's better to be part of a crowd. Fish schools work on the same collective principle. Sardines traveling up the coast of South Africa are part of the greatest fish migration on the planet. Their synchrony relies on a pressure sense that runs along their bodies. This lateral line detects the movements of their nearest neighbor and allows them to move as one. It also detects predators.
And it's not just sharks that make a meal of the sardines. A superpod of common dolphins is also on their trail. They're joined by an attack squadron of Cape Gannets. A swarm of predators is drawn in by the swarming prey. But the sardines resist the attacks by staying deep and keeping the school together. It's difficult to take this super shoal by surprise. Yet attacks from below and above begin to break down the sardines' collective defenses. They fragment the shoal into smaller targets. In many shoals, the predators begin to have the upper hand until one arrives to take the lot. The Bride Whale. 20 tons of hungry blubber. As soon as they can, the splinter group seek refuge in the master shoal. They regroup, and despite the strength of the assault, still find there is safety in numbers. To breed in the coldest place on Earth, emperor penguins must also become part of a crowd. Their chicks are born in the depths of the Antarctic winter. Their only protection from the cold is their parents' brood pouch. But as winter storms set in, this isn't enough. As temperatures reach 40 below, even the adults' only chance of survival is to huddle together. They start to waddle with a single purpose. All converge on the same central point until a huddle begins to form. Each penguin must find a place to tuck in. But by speeding up the action, it's clear that something more organized is going on. Soon, the huddle numbers thousands, and still more keep coming. While those on the outside take the brunt of the storm, those on the inside take tiny steps that move the huddle in waves. The densely packed penguins continue to shift and rotate from the center. By keeping constantly on the move, no penguin is left permanently out in the cold. In fact, everyone gets a turn in the warm center. The huddle is so efficient, penguins in the inner core often overheat. Then the colony breaks down. The coldest penguins that were on the outside form a new huddle. As others join, the cold penguins become warm and snug once more. Step by step, huddle after huddle, the penguins weather the storm. Emperors are the only creatures on Earth to breed in the Antarctic winter. 
but they need the warm embrace of the crowd to make this strategy work. Throughout nature, coming together to breed is a popular idea. The Mississippi River plays host to one of the most spectacular of these gatherings. On a single day, thousands upon thousands of mayflies emerge from the river. They've lived for a year as aquatic larvae, molting from one stage to the next, preparing to take their first flight. Within a day or two, they undergo their final metamorphosis into adults ready to breed. They soon spread their new wings, this time in a mating flight. By emerging together, they overwhelm any predators. There are simply too many to eat. They lay their eggs back in the river, 8,000 at a time, an insurance against the millions of mayflies that get lost along the way. Some years, the swarms can be so dense, they slow traffic to a crawl. At their peak, they can cover four and a half thousand square miles and even show up on radar. But it's easy for them to get lost. They navigate by flying at a set angle to the moon. And more and more, this ancient beacon is as good as useless. Artificial moons are everywhere, and these beckoning lights lured the mayflies straight into town. They mistake the reflections on the road for the water surface and descend to lay their eggs. The road is soon covered by countless confused insects in futile attempts to reproduce. Yet an estimated 18 trillion emerge, two and a half thousand times the world's human population. By an extraordinary coincidence, the invasion often coincides with the 4th of July, adding a bizarre contribution to the festivities. This is the most ridiculous thing. Sounds like bubble wrap when you're walking. <laughs> Amid the celebrations, billions upon billions of mayflies enjoy the last day of their lives. Mayflies aren't the only creatures that reproduce in great congregations. On the Pacific coast of Mexico and California, from February to September, at the highest tides of the month, there's another bizarre invasion. These are Gulf grunion, fish with a seemingly suicidal desire to breed out of water. For just a few minutes, the entire shoreline becomes an orgy of mating fish. It starts as the females burrow backwards, laying their eggs in the exposed sand. Their plan is to deposit them as far from the reach of aquatic predators as they can. Each wave carries in more fish, all with the same purpose in mind.
Among the writhing masses, the males must find a female and fertilize her eggs before they are buried for good. He wraps his chosen partner in a slippery embrace until the couple are washed back out to sea. It will be two weeks before the tide reaches this height again. The eggs will then hatch and the fry return to the ocean. The grunion may have outwitted the egg predators of the sea, but the adults are in danger from fish-eating birds. Yet by taking this risk, far more of their eggs survive than if the fish had laid them in the water. Some animals use even stranger techniques in a bid to avoid predators. Once every two decades, trees across the eastern United States are subjected to what seems like an alien invasion. These are periodic cicadas. For the past 17 years, these nymphs have lived deep underground. Now, under the cover of darkness, they all emerge together. For all that time, they sucked the sap from the roots of trees and counted the passing years. Now millions, maybe billions of cicadas joined the secret invasion. They make their way to the nearest tree and start to climb. Soon, the nymphs break out of their old bodies, a miracle that can take as little as 10 minutes. But before their crumpled wings can fly, they must be pumped full of blood, a marvel of insect hydraulics. Many are eaten, but by emerging all together, cicadas swamp predators with more food than they can eat. As this happens just once every 17 years, their predators can't time their own breeding cycles to benefit. The cicadas' deafening mating calls come from a vibrating drum hidden inside the male's abdomen. the female homes in on the ear-piercing sound. This is the only moment in 17 years that the cicadas spend any time together. She then uses her egg-laying tube as a saw, laying 30 eggs in each incision. When they hatch, they'll burrow into the soil. Job done, the cicadas drop dead in their millions. But deep underground, their offspring are thriving and will take their turn in 17 years' time. Not all bizarre gatherings are of nature's design. In the 1970s, silver carp were accidentally introduced into the Mississippi after escaping from a fish farm. Originally from Asia, they now outnumber local fish by 10 to 1. Their explosive leaping is startling. Some clear 10 feet in a single jump.
Their behavior is triggered by the motors of passing boats. The fish mistake pressure waves from the outboards for the movement of predators and literally jump with fright. With the river filled to bursting, when one fish leaps, it scares its neighbor, creating a chain reaction. Here, anglers don't even need a rod or line. The carp do the job for them. But with some carp weighing 40 pounds and more, collisions with people can be dangerous. Having colonized the Mississippi and many of its tributaries, they are now poised to invade the Great Lakes. And this is by no means the first swarm created by human hands. In the skies of North Africa, desert locusts are on the move. They thrived when we first started to grow crops, and they've been plaguing us ever since. The view from inside the swarm shows just what a formidable invading force they have become. A single swarm can cover over 400 square miles and contain 40 billion individuals. As they fly, they synchronize their wing beats. This reduces turbulence, making their flying more efficient. Like fighter pilots, they fly in perfect formation. They even have crash detectors to help them avoid mid-air collisions. They react six times faster than a human pilot can. So even in crowded airspace, split-second maneuvers get them out of trouble. In their search for food, they can cover 150 miles in a single day. And when they reach agricultural crops, their populations explode. They consume their own body weight in food every day. And when there's nothing left to eat, they move on. Each day, a large swarm can devour 200,000 tons, enough to feed half a billion people. No other swarm has had such an impact on us. But some animal gatherings are impressive for different reasons. There are caves across the Southwest that are home to the largest concentrations of mammals on the planet. Here, 40 million free-tailed bats gather together in one colossal maternity ward. These females have traveled from Central America to give birth here, and the cave is like a giant crash where everyone shares the childcare. At dusk, adults and young take to the air. They swirl around the entrance before leaving their roosts for the night. The young learn from their mothers. Among the millions, she recognizes her own offspring by its call, and they stay together as they fly. They stream towards the best sources of food, information they glean from their last night's outing. The first bats out are ahead of the crowd, but being first has its disadvantages. Red-tailed hawks know they're coming. And catch them with the flick of a claw.
Peregrines join the attack, but these birds only hunt while there's still light to see by. As darkness falls, the bats stream out unmolested. And with such incredible numbers, the whole exodus can last two hours. They all follow the same pattern, swirling around the entrance in a bat tornado. At normal speed, you get a sense of how difficult this must be. But bats react many times faster than we do. Collisions are rare. The vortex always spins in the same direction, and at the center, information is exchanged. Together, the bats decide where they should forage for the night. Such collective decision-making is most developed among social insects, such as bees. Bees create swarms when they're looking for a new home. And while house hunting, they can turn up just about anywhere. A motorcycle makes a good temporary bivouac. There are plenty of nooks and crannies to provide shelter. The first bees to land release a pheromone that draws the others in. But as the sun beats down and temperatures soar, they need to find a more permanent home. The workers fan their wings to cool the colony down, but in the heat of the day, it isn't enough. The overheated bees send a chemical signal to scout bees, who set off to find alternative accommodations. A scout must find a cavity large enough to contain the whole hive. She inspects the property, pacing the floor and measuring, just like a human surveyor. Once the scout is happy, she leaves to let the swarm know. The returning scout uses a waggle dance to give instructions as to where the new home can be found. The straight part of the dance shows the direction the bees must fly. Its duration tells them how far they have to go. A second's worth of dancing equals half a mile of travel. When the dancing bee leaves, other scouts follow. With her guidance, this advanced party makes a beeline to the exact spot. Now it's their turn to check it out. They too pace out the cavity, confirming the initial measurements. Then they hold a committee meeting, and by some unknown process, arrive at a consensus. The whole scouting party lets the swarm know the good news by rushing through with vibrating wings in what's known as a buzz run. This tells the colony it's time to leave. Tens of thousands of bees take to the air in less than two minutes. all following the scouts to their new home. As the bees settle in, they release a scent that attracts any stragglers. Communal thinking is the key to the hive's success. And they aren't the only insects to show the wisdom of the crowd. As the rains arrive in the mountains of East Africa, another social insect is on the move. 20 million army ants have collectively made a decision to find a new home. They take their eggs and pupae with them 
their entire worldly possessions. Soldier ants guard the pathways as the workers carry the load. A twig blocking the path is like a tree blocking a main road. Those first at the scene call for backup by releasing a pheromone. Soldiers arrive and get to work. They can lift 50 times their own body weight. This takes supreme organization. They all manage to lift and push at the same time. Obstruction removed, the traffic soon starts flowing again. In defense of the trail, the ants take no prisoners. A soil millipede is quickly dispatched. But with their sensitive antennae, the soldiers have detected that it's poisonous. Nearby ants get the message and immediately gather lumps of earth and begin to bury the problem. With the millipede out of the way, the trail can safely continue. But more dangers lie ahead. A praying mantis plucks an ant from the ranks. But the stricken ant sends out a message, and soon reinforcements arrive. The mantis is a deadly predator, but the ants know exactly what they're dealing with. One soldier grabs the mantis's jaw to immobilize it, as the rest pile on. Its fate is sealed by a clinical decapitation. All trails lead to the new nest. It's made entirely from the bodies of ants. Linked leg by leg, they form a living structure. But they aren't just physically joined together, they think together too. Inside is the queen. Her role is to replenish the colony by laying around 60,000 eggs a day. Yet she is merely an egg-laying machine. It's the ants that surround her that make up the mind of the swarm. Although individual ants aren't intelligent, the interactions between them create a different kind of intelligence, a super brain that reflects the colony's collective thinking. Sometimes, even large gatherings of mammals can show the kind of collective intelligence perfected by the social insects. It's called the Great Migration, a vast movement of zebras and wildebeest across the plains of East Africa. Their biggest barrier is the Mara River, and here a wrong decision can easily mean death. The wildebeest do everything together, and usually their collective thinking pays off. In contrast, zebras usually travel in family groups, and the lead mare makes the decisions. Crocodiles regularly put these different strategies to the test. The zebras are wary. They know that crocs mean trouble. But the wildebeest aren't so canny. By relying on each other to warn of danger, they seem oblivious to the threat. <laughs> 